General, would you care to step outside? Come to me, son of Jarrell! Kneel before Zod! Guys who were left by his father in the Phantom Zone. Yeah, um, somehow it, you crack the zone and, they and they come. They yeah, out. but you still have him having the same powers. So yeah, no but there's fight. three against one. Yeah. And they have the same powers exactly on Earth because of the molecular structure. They have exactly the same powers. That's true. I mean, that's, that's exciting. And so then, then it's very... a real challenge. I was here in Los Angeles. I went to a Christmas party. And so Army Archer, the variety columnist, uh, was, was there. And we started chatting. And he said, so I hear you. There was tension between you and Donner. And I said, yeah, there was. It's true. But uh, you know, the result is there. The man made a great movie. And uh, so I'm looking forward to finishing Superman 2 with him. Army called Donner says, oh, so I, I spoke with Pierre Spangler, and apparently now all is forgotten, and you're going to go do Superman 2 together. To which Donner said, well, if he's on it, I'm not. And that was published, actually. You can look in the variety. <laughs> if you look around the end of the year of 78, that's where it was. It created the atmosphere and the tension for us, and I'm, by us, I mean the Salkins and I, and the Salkins are very loyal people. I'd been there from the outset, and if the gentleman didn't want to work with me, then we had to find someone to replace the gentleman. I said, we got to take another director. And it was an incredibly difficult, crazy decision. One came out, and I had my obligation to go back and finish two. I mean, I was ready to go, and I get a telegram one day. It says your services will no longer be needed. Richard Lester was taking over the film. I never to this day ever heard from Richard Lester. I was so pissed off, you can't believe it, because I was ready to go back, obviously not asking for any more money. I'd been paid. And I wanted to go back, and Tom and I wanted to go back. And Tom and I had in our minds the completion of two. We had a great idea for if two went well, we could do three, and if we did anything, we could do four. But as I say, they chose to send me this telegram. I was ready to get on an airplane and kill because they were taking my baby away from me. But at showbiz, and I managed to get through it. Obviously, two had to be finished. And uh, Terry Samuel came to me and said, Lester would like me to finish two. Could I go over and work with him? And I said, I can't do that. Uh, I said, Dick Donner is my friend. Dick Donner uh, brought me on this project. Uh, they fired Dick, and I, I can't do it. So they fired Donner, which was just such a horrifying thing to do that even now, 30 years later, I find it shocking. It was a horrifying thing to do. And you can't uh, put Richard Lester's name on as director because the director has to have directed more than half of the movie. And you can't just reshoot shoot your old scenes. You have to have different scenes. So they hastily rewrote a lot of scenes with Chris and I and threw out this Superman too that we worked with such love you know, I, I was really eager to get back and, and do two and finish it. I was real disappointed uh, that Donner wasn't there. And I thought maybe it was a lark that they, they had to be joking that he really, you know, because the stories were there when we were doing one and two together before one was released. I mean, Lester was there and walking around, and, and then the rumors had started. You know, I even made a statement one time to Salk. I said, well, if Donner doesn't come back, I'm not coming back. How can you take away the father of a family, you know? You know, Dick, with Dick Donner, you find things. You know, there's, there's a family to it. Richard Lester came in. There, there was nothing close to a family atmosphere. There was nothing close to finding out what works and what doesn't work. You'd come in. He told you to stand on that mark over there and say blue, and then go walk over there and say red. Right, line it I don't up think for it David. Needs to be, I, I think that was too fast. I don't know. I had the awful feeling that it was a little quick for the size. It made it belied the size of the bus. Nobody disliked Richard Lester. I mean, Richard Lester's like a wonderful director, but the point was that Richard Lester came in to do a very complicated gig. He knew we were all in love with Richard Donner. The Sorkins had chosen him 
because they knew that he was an economic director who could bring things in on budget. So I would imagine he had a shot list of essentials of what the producers needed to finish this bloody movie. I found working with him an absolute joy. I mean, you know, he's a very amenable, funny man. He didn't pressurize one into using everything which had been used in, in one. Boy, I really wish you could hear me. Because <laughs> I need you. The economics were such as to say, well, do we really need Brand on this? Because uh, he was extremely, extremely expensive. And we then said, well, economically, that doesn't quite make sense. So what do we do? I believe it's Ilya. I said, well, if it's not the father, it's the mother. <laughs> and we, and we had Susanna York, who had appeared in the first movie, who was very happy to reappear in the second. It even made sense dramatically. You know, very often I've been introduced to young, younger children, you know, uh, this is Superman's mum. And uh, it's great, it's lovely. I do feel proud to be, actually. I mean, at, at the time, I didn't take it particularly seriously. Um, but afterwards, you know, when, when you realise what that story means and has meant over generations and what the film reinforced, was that original essence. So to have been part of that and to be recognised as part of that is very nice. No one may leave without my permission. I said no one leaves. The result is that uh, we didn't use what didn't fit. We worked around what was there, but of course we had to invent new things because it wasn't the same picture. will never become a man. And what we did, and Lester did, I think, wonderfully, is he adapted the whole second picture is like the New York style. The fact is that we went the comic book thing. Do you have to, uh, do you have to uh, spice up the tanker as well? Or yeah, yeah, that's all I start underneath. <laughs> Stuff to put in Christmas trees, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, do, do these little pedestrians, they slide back and forth? Yeah, yeah, they move. They, they, actually, they were mostly for the, um, you know, when the gale was blowing, when the wind was coming down the street. Because you get away with whack. Yeah, 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 because you can't, can't really get away with it. We had a, a meeting before anything. We just, you know, we all got together in a, in a room in Pinewood Studios with Richard Lester and all the heads of department, special effects and the art department and, and my department and the sound and everybody got together. We were given a list of Superman's attributes, if you like, you know, and what his powers were. We all sat around discussing these ideas of what we could get Superman to do and not do. It built up team spirit too. It, it helped a lot. It made, you know, people sort of say, yeah, it's a good idea, we'll make, we'll make that work somehow. Don't worry, we'll make it work. Or, well, oh, this is a problem, you know. But it was a great, great spirit on the whole, the whole business. It was, it was terrific. So then I realised that, that I was having to plan something which was like a jigsaw in a way. So I had to dovetail what John Barry had done uh, in preparation for two, uh, into what the continuation of my work was going to be. So it was an interesting exercise in, in, in combining the two and rebuilding some of his sets in a smaller scale so there was a flow from one to two. I did the first Superman film, which Richard Donner directed, and then there were two or three subsequent films that I did not write the particular score for, and I can honestly say I think it solely had to do with commitments elsewhere. I was always very happy when they told me that they would use the themes and that my colleagues who were going to take over the particular assignment would use it. That's wonderful for me, and I'm very happy about that and continue to be. What I was engaged to do was to take the whole of John Williams' score and review that in a context from Superman 2. In other words, the thematic material I was to use. But what happens is that when you get a whole new set of scenes, then you have to adapt, reorchestrate those original themes. It's quite a challenging job. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> One of my favorite 
Thank you very, very much. Thanks a lot. The movie was a huge success, and uh, the difference was that uh, the first one came out at Christmas and had uh, literally no competition. The second one had a tremendous amount of competition because there's a little film called Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, of course, it was such a gigantic success that I would say comparatively, Raiders would not have been there. Uh, Superman 2 would have been as much or more than one. I was the only one that went out for nine months, one and a half times around the world selling the film because I was the only one that wasn't going to go on about problems on the set because I, was, I wasn't really aware of them. And I know that everybody else was. And they really all got together, and not because they were American. I think because they were on location, they were away, as we all found, find as actors, that you become this very tight-knit family. I did not become that tight. I wasn't part of that. I wasn't privy to it, because I went home at the end of the day. So we as actors felt that on some level we'd been hung out to dry. At least I did. Christopher didn't as much. At that point, he was very aware of the politics of movie making and who you were nice to, something I never grasped. So I never had a strong sense of what one, how to play the politics of this. I came out in the papers and said, I think they're beneath contempt as human beings. And then they put that on the cover of Time Out magazine and thus blew a lot of parts. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Sorry I've been away so long. I won't let you down again. Superman is definitely a, something I had emotional ties to. It was, a, it was an extraordinary adventure. I think even from the industry history point of view, the, the, for movies of that size to be put together uh, independently as, as, as we did, and that was the, the genius of Alexander Salkin to be able to raise this kind of financing is, uh, is truly amazing. And I think it's com completely impossible today. This is one thing that I must say I'm, I'm pretty proud. That has been admitted even by people who do not like the so-called Salkinds. They all admitted that uh, when we make a movie, we, we put everything we can. All of a sudden, we recognized the movie business could be reached as a mass medium. Superman fell into that category. You realize all of a sudden the business was the business of events. I think there was an equal amount of awe and anxiety because this was a new paradigm to spend that kind of money with those kind of independent resources against that kind of a target. Pretty daring at that time. Mm -hmm.